Welcome cooks to my series where I give a weekly cooking tip every single Saturday. My goal is to motivate you to have a weekend filled with cooking, tasting, and delicious fun. This week we're going to talk about the difference between skillets and saute pans. They're both great, they're both indispensable tools for the kitchen, and we're going to cover the basics so we know what to get when we're out searching for new cookware. So join me for my Saturday cooking tip of the week. So I have a lot of stuff out here in the kitchen today and I just wanted to go over some of the basics because I get so many questions about cookware because cookware is one of my favorite topics and for you to have a lot of success in the kitchen you need to know not only the types of cookware but when you use them for what kind of dishes and also what kind of materials that you want to get them in. So we're going to be talking next week about materials. Today we're just talking about types. So saute pans versus skillets. What are the difference between the two? You might say, what is a skillet, right? Because a lot of people call skillets fry pans. So you can call a skillet a skillet, a fry pan, whatever it is you're used to uh, calling it, that's what I'm talking about. So my opinions on this are a lot of people will tell you what you have to use. You have to use this, right? My first disclaimer is you can use whatever you're comfortable with and whatever works for you. But I want you to understand the different types so that you're able to make that kind of purchasing decision, right? There is no best of anything here. My opinion is the fully equipped kitchen needs to have one of each. They need to have a saute pan and they need to have a skillet. They need to have a saute pan, maybe of different types, and they also need to have a skillet, maybe of different types of materials. There's not one answer for anything because they all have pros and cons. So the fully equipped kitchen is gonna have saute pans and skillets of different materials. So let's get into first the difference between the two, and then we're gonna talk about some uses and some pros and cons of each type. Okay, so this is such a complex topic that I created a big list between sautés and skillets so I get everything in there, right? So first and foremost, what is a saute and what is a skillet? Now, like I said, skillets are also called frying pans. So if you call it saute versus frying pan or saute versus skillet, it's just your terminology for it, right? Skillets and frying pan are used interchangeably. So here is a beautiful all clad saute pan. And the st distinguishing features of a saute pan are that they have a wide bottom and they have high sides, high straight sides. And one of the reasons they tend to have two handles, they tend to have a long handle as well as a helper handle because they tend to be rather heavy. So you kind of need that when it's filled with food um, so you can move it around. So it has this helper handle to help you with that. So it's wide and deep, right? That is what a saute pan is. And what's great about a saute pan is it is used for shallow pan frying, stir frying, and braising. This is contrast to a frying pan, which you will see does not generally have a helper handle on this side because they tend to be a little lighter 
And what the difference between the frying pan and the saute pan is the frying pan does have, you know, a wide base, but they're usually not as wide as a saute pan. And the reason for that is the sides are sloped. See how the sides here are sloped versus the sides here are straight. So you say, why is that? Well, it's because the frying pan is used for quick, hot uh, cooking. So you can put something in there, you cook it off, you know, shallow frying with a little bit of grease or a little bit of butter or a little bit of olive oil. You cook it quick, fast, and you're done, right? And you can also use these slope slot sides to flip and it's also good to get your spatula in there. So a spatula fits in here better because of the slope side. So if you're cooking eggs, boom, right? It's great with the spatula. With here, you can use a spatula in it, but the straight sides, it's harder to flip than it is in a frying pan. So the distinguishing features of the two, wider base, straight sides, and deeper. Wide base, but not as wide, sloping sides. This is used for quick cooking, flipping, and stuff in and out of there and fast. With tent, not, tend to not have a lot of liquid in it. Sometimes you can put a liquid in it, but not as much. This is made for shallow pan frying, braising, stir frying. It will retain a little bit more of the steam and the liquid and it won't reduce as fast as this. Because of the soaping sides, there's more opportunity for it to reduce faster than in here. So if you're gonna do a braise, you're gonna do in a saute. You're gonna cook it in a little bit of liquid for a longer period of time. A frying pan is just for a mainly a cook, quick cook, you flip it around and have fun like that, right? you can do a little bit longer cooking in here because it's not going to reduce as fast. One benefit of these is saute pans sometimes comes with a lid and frying pans tend not to come with the lid. So if you're going to braise some chicken, some beef, something like that, you can put the lid on it in a saute pan where you wouldn't do that in a fry pan. So if you want to quickly cook some onions, mushrooms, eggs, a quick vegetable, um, shallow pan fry a piece of chicken, something like that. Grab your frying pan, you can do it quick and easy, right? If you want to shallow fry some chicken, if you want to do a braise, you can pan fry, sear off some chicken, throw some liquid in there and then let it braise for a half hour in there. You want to use your saute pan. So one of the things about these uh, pans when you go to the store, they're going to give you a measurement. And the measurement is usually based on from rim to rim, not from base to base. So you'll see something that's like a, a 10 inch frying pan, but sometimes you don't have a lot of room uh, in here because it has really sloping sides. So you might have an eight inch uh, base here, but it's a 10 or 12 inch pan. So these can really differ. These tend to be a little bit more standard because you have straight sides. So you have your base all the way across and you have your straight sides. Um, these tend to vary a lot more. And that can also impact this on the size of your burners because yeah. um, you might have small or you might need a really big one. And with the saute ones, maybe it does not fit on your thing so she get big one. yeah so you kind of want to pair them with your burner size you don't want the burner sticking out outside of the pan so you want uh your uh the base of your pan to match up with your burner um a lot of times with these these will stick out beyond the edge of your pan uh your uh, burner a lot of times if you're saute or you have a really big frying pan um, but you just mainly want to make sure that the burner is not larger than your pan. So what do I have here? I have an all-clad 
saute pan. This is a fully clad pan. So this is our saute. I also, and these are our skillets. So I have a large cast iron skillet. Right. This sort of shows the range of skillets. This here is a French skillet. So it's kind of different because it has sloping sides, but the sides are a little bit higher than you would see on a traditional fry pan. So this I would kind of say is a um, hybrid. hybrid kind of pan because it's, it's a frying pan because it's sloped, but the sides are a little bit higher. So you will get a little bit less reducing in this kind of pan, but you still have this wide base on it. I love this pan. This is an all clad French skillet. This is a basic fry pan. It's obviously stainless steel. Um, it has your sloping sides, which does limit the amount of room you have on the base. But this is what is sort of like a classic frying pan. And this is my beater pan. This is a nonstick and it's, you know, it's an anodized pan and it's starting to give up some of its anodization. It's nonstick. This is our daily driver, you know, making eggs, all kinds of stuff. And this is a great pan to have and it has sloping sides. So some of the differences between the two, because this has the slope side versus the um, higher side, for new cooks like me, this tends to be easier to flip stuff around because you can just push stuff to the bottom and boom, flip it around, right? That sloping side allows you to toss it things a little better than in a saute pan. Also in the fry pan, you're gonna have more reducing. It's gonna be a little bit drier of a cook in the fry pan than it is in here because this is gonna retain some of that steam. So that's why this is better for searing, but also if you're gonna be frying potatoes or something, you might get a little more steam built up in your saute, so you can use it, but you're a little more at risk, especially if you overload it with food. You gotta be careful. So yeah, <laughs> Eric just explained that. So he, uh, he mentioned that because the steam's a little more, you put potatoes in there, it can steam those potatoes a little bit more because of the high sides. I love using a saute for potatoes, but you also have to remember that you, you gotta, you know, you gotta be careful because you can turn them into mush a lot easier in a saute than in a frying pan. So the frying pan, I think was developed first and it's for quick, your quick cooks, but there was also a need for some of those pan frying functions, but also to be able to cook more prolonged. And that's what's great about the saute pan is it can do a lot of things that the fry pan can do, but because of those higher sides, you do, you can use this as a brazer. This is really an all purpose pan. Um, so you ask, what should I get? A skillet or a saute pan? That's the big question, right? So my answer is you need one of each at least one of each, right? You need something that you can do quick cooks. This thing is great for that, but you also need things that you can braise, that you can do all those other fun things with. So if you really want to expand your cooking, a lot of basic cookware sets come with both a fry pan and a saute. The question is just when are you going to use them? If you want to do a quick cook really fast, and you want to be able to get rid of a lot of liquid, you can use, this is the great thing to use, the fry pan. If you want to do the similar type of things, but also you want to have the ability to, you know, do a little braising, do a little simmering, do a little smothering, do all that fun stuff, reach for your saute pan. Or more parts. You get a lot more yeah. parts in that than you can on If you're cooking up some chicken, if you put them in here and you have four or five pieces of chicken, what happens is they're too crowded in one of these pans. In here, there's more surface area at the bottom, so you have more places for more pieces, but also you are going to get a little bit more steaming action in this pan. So, um, as well as this. I think like the Lodge, 
Um, these things, even though they're cast iron skillets, they're sort of like hybrids to me. Because they don't have, you know, they're too heavy to be tossing stuff around in them. But, um, and they don't like have super sloping sides like a, a fry pan. So these are very unique. They're really um, sort of a hybrid. I believe they do sell some that have more sloping sides. We went to the um, Lodge factory store and they had some that had like, looked like a true frying pan and they were um, cast iron. This to me is like a quasi frying pan, saute pan kind of thing. So it's like a hybrid. So that is the difference between a saute pan and a skillet or a fry pan. My opinion is you need both. You use them a little bit differently, although you can do similar things in these two pans, you will get slightly different results because of what we're talking about. The slope sides, the more reducing, the little bit more steaming and braising in this one. The ability to flip a little, a lot of people can flip in one of these, um, but for a beginner, it's easier to learn to flip in a fry pan because of the slope sides. Um, a little bit more wider on the base than these. But just when you're cooking, you just want to think about sort of what you want to do. Do you want to do it hot and fast? Do you want to not want to, you don't want a lot of liquid in there, or you want to be able to do it hot and fast, but then maybe develop some liquid in there or do some braising. So there you go. So Eric, what do you have to say about these pans? Well, I think Amy covered a lot of stuff pretty good. What I like to do sometimes when I'm cooking is I like to do simple stuff like spaghetti. And so what I like to do is I like to take this uh, big old saute pan because I can go ahead and then just fry up some um, um, onions, get them soft in a little bit, put them off on the side, throw some uh, ground sausage in there, get that browned up, put the onions back in there. Oh, I forgot mushrooms too. Get the mushrooms going, put them back in there with the meat and then boom, get the sauce going. And then that way it doesn't splatter too much because as we know, sauce can splatter. Yeah. But I can get all that stuff in the one pan and I can get a lot of it in there, right? It's a big pan compared to some of these little guys. And you know, you can sauce. Yeah, the, slow, the, the sloping slope. sides will splatter uh, tomato sauce all over the place. Where this one, like, like I said, um, this is great for making a meat sauce. Um, it's, you know, they're just different. I really think that, um, you know, I really think that a good kitchen has both. And I like to get a big old whole one pound of uh, pasta going, right? So that takes a lot of sauce. And yeah, and stuff. you need the depth. I like the volume, yeah. So next week we're going to talk about types of materials so we can get to know when we should use one versus the other because they're all great and they all have their pros and cons and they all have uh, different uses. So cooks, it's Saturday. Have a great weekend. Um, get out there and cook. If you like this video, please subscribe below. Leave me a comment and a like and visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. I'm also on social media at Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. You can catch me in my group if you want to talk about this further at facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. I'm in there almost every day talking and chatting about kitchen equipment, cookware, and recipes. I'm also on Instagram at cooking with Amy. Thank you.